はい、どうぞ。お願いします。お願いします。お願いします。So、we just have a little bit of listening. Yeah, let's explore. Let's go. To the front, the back. Just in front, and change as you like. Back to the front a little bit wider with the legs and just keep the, vertically, the front and back movement. Let's explore a little bit with a wider base. Okay, bring the leg in, just come in <clears throat> side to side. Start to bring a little bit of rotation into it with the body. A little bit to the front, a little bit to the back. Full rotation. And then just taking it now into a wave. Start to increase it a little bit more, drawing the hands down. And just play a little bit with coming off the center. Just spiraling a little bit through the movement. 
Take a little bit of time in the ground, put the hands if you like. Good. And imagine a little bit, you're kind of picking something off the ground, but in a kind of pretty fluid way. You're just going to kind of use the arms, really draw the legs down. You kind of draw. And in this case, just play a little bit with the arms. They're going to kind of come out and then come back to center. So they're going to kind of do this. So imagine you're kind of rolling down. Down, draw it up, and then draw it up into the center. So. Play a little bit with the feet. Good. And then just drop the body down. Let the hands release. Let the shoulders release. And just a moment, just spend here. Yeah, let the body turn down, keep breathing. And feel the spine lengthening. Just play a little bit of kind of swinging through the legs with the hands. Just initiating with the hips and keep the breath going. Just more and more trying to release towards the ground with the upper body. And just working side to side with the hands, just swinging a little bit across the body and then out to the sides. And maybe let the hips again much as possible control the hands. And then just start to work with circles with the hands. Circle one way, play the circle the other way, kind of mix them in. No, I find it nice also just, just to do one side with the hand, the other hand just kind of placed on the shoulder and just kind of use it, just kind of check, feel what's happening in the shoulder. It should feel like nothing really, should totally soft, really drained in the shoulder, just nice and relaxed. So, and just play a little bit with the directions you can work with kind of figure of eights. Just open the hip book out a little bit. Start to really mobilize the spine. You know, start to kind of sway it side to side. And if you like now, keep the fingertips in contact with the ground. You've got a little, very light contact with the ground. Hardly any weight in the fingers, but just gives you a contact point. And again, more and more, see so if you can release through the head, really pass the movement all the way through the spine. And just really, really slowly, just start to bring the movement back up to the vertical. And roll the body up. Drawing it up. Keep it nice and loose. Just draw the body back to the vertical. And just continue the movement with the spine. And a figure of eight movement with the whole body. Play a little bit with really mobilizing the shoulders now. Hopefully they feel a little bit looser. <clears throat> you hopefully feel that a little bit more mobile. That's it. Start to basically include the arms. Just imagine you're constantly kind of working like a figure of eight with the hip. And then just try and work the hand work into it. 
Nice and loose. And again, you might find it easier just to work one side and use the other hand as a kind of contact on the shoulder or it's on the center as well. So if you kind of place it in the center, kind of have a, and have a nice central point just to kind of feel your way around. Play with really mobilizing the hand now. So yeah. And changing sides when you feel like it. Yeah, just mix them in. Press a little bit with the arm coming towards the back. Try not to keep all kind of frontal. So good. And we're just working with both arms, really mobilizing now the hands. And just play a little bit with a kind of diagonal movement through the hands. You can imagine different kind of movements. You can think about kind of slapping movement. And you can think of any kind of movement really. Just play with these diagonals. Start to mobilize the arm a little bit more. And the whole arm's involved, heavy. Shoulders nice and open. And feel the weight in the feet as the hand comes out. No. And as the hand goes down. Now, let's feel the weight sinking into the feet. Nice. And just playing with the hands here, just swinging them down. Try and keep the same kind of connection with the hands to the hips. Just let them swing down. Let the body just drop, fall into place. Try and feel if you can imagine also the, the, the body extending further towards or further through the ground. Imagine the movement's going to be past deeper into the ground than just the kind of the surface. Feel the weight around, drain down, deep, deep, deep into the ground. So, that's that. Good. And then we just work on the sideways one. So working the hips, just let the arm come to the shoulder and the other to the lower back or the hip. Goes up, and really keeping that same connection again with the hip. Shoulders nice and open. Just pass the movement to the arm. Again, just notice that point when you make contact with the body. You feel that the weight is also draining down into the ground. Feel again the kind of impact of the movement down much, much further than the kind of surface. We can do in in this case. Sometimes we we kind of live like we live on the on the surface in a way. We kind of do this kind of work, but we really feel that there's something deeper down. There. It really will drain. Down, down. So. Good. And the last one, just for the shoulders, mobilizing oh, front and back. And really match the feeling in the front and the back. Really kind of equal. In terms of the movement. And just change directions as you like. Take the hands one way, and then take them the other. So. Good. 
Okay, good. So just work on the shoulders a little bit, just drawing across the body. Keep the shoulders back and down. Oh, yeah. And change. Just over the top. Nice and light. Just draw the arm across the back of the head. And change. Okay, just take the other side again, just stretching a little bit more. Just kind of pulling the body out of the ground. Oh, nice and easy back. Change sides. You feel the rib cage really opening. So. Good. Get just over to the back. Just draw the arm across. Change. Get the hands together. Stretch in, open it up. Release it. And then if you can, just bring the hands to the lower, to the spine. If you can get to here, this is this is okay. Just on the lower back. And if you can, you can also bring them up and then add palm contact. Here, stretch them a little bit up. Okay, and then flatten with the fingers again, just wider with the with the posture. Stretch up, drop the pelvis, and then just increase. Let the hands raise up, drop the head. Just settle into the move. Keep the breath going. And just play a little bit with opening the shoulders out, hands up, maybe to the side a little bit. Just feel where your body needs to go. And just release, hands to the feet. And just again, feel you can release through the whole back, lengthen, wide through the hands. And just as far as comfortable, just to draw the body down as if the head's going to touch the ground. Just hold it. Okay, just bring the hands out to the center of the body. And just walk the hands forward. Just until you really the fingertips. And then just imagine you're really pulling the hips back. Kind of clinging a little bit with the fingertips. Oh, right the length of whole body. Oh, yeah. So you can just bring the hand to the center. It's gets in line with the shoulder and the chest. And then just opening out with these big, big, big rotations. Just stay to one side. Do about five or six. Nice and slow. Keep opening out. One more time this side. And then changing sides. Yeah. Bring the hands back. Let's bring the feet in. Close the hands. Oh yeah. Just align now the hands and the feet together. As much as you need to bend the knees, just bring the palms into contact with the ground. Let the head drop. And then just coming back up to a vertical, straighten the legs, feel the hands come out of the ground a little bit. Let them just drop to the toes. And then just start to initiate the rise of the body with the pelvis. Feel the hands just get dragged up Ooh, along the shin bone. Initiating with the pelvis, drawing the body up, we'll step past the knees, keep the breath going. And just start to really come up to the vertical, nice and slow, the last part. 
Let the hands just cross onto the side of the thigh. And then draw the body up that way. Good. Good. Just shake the face there. Hands, feet. And roll them a little bit. Press them forward. Change sides. Let's roll the arms down. Centering the body up, just let everything shake. Keep the feet on the ground now, just. Can just feel the weight be received through the ground. Body should feel nice and relaxed. Let's play a little bit with the body. And just slow the movement down. It's become smaller and smaller. And just come through us. Good. Okay, good. So take a job. And do a little bit job. So, yeah. Okay, dokey. Great. Okay, just start nice and easy. Just going to just keep shoulder width apart. Just rolling through the hand. Roll in the forearm. Just kind of brace with the other hand. Key thing is that the arm's just going to kind of rotate. It's not just going to move in space. Just kind of just let the arm, especially the forearm, really find a spiral. And as much as you can, just keep the elbow down. So I feel like the elbow's quite heavy. And just watch for the elbow kind of come in up and out. Throw the shoulder up. Just Focus on the shoulder being back down. Also working the grip with the little fingers, little finger, ring finger. Ring finger, face of the hand, the palm, all in contact with the jaw. And just change size. Good. And again, just really feel what's happening in the feet as well. So we tend to, when we do this, just focus in the hand. Just also feel what's happening in the feet. We're just passing it one to the other. Especially now a little bit more dynamic, just listen a little bit to the feet, where the weight's been received. Okay, just a little bit extending out with the arm. And we feel the hip is included in the movement. And especially now, start to listen to the feet. So what's happening in the feet, especially as the arm comes out. Just feel where the weight is going through the foot, through the feet. Change in size. So good. Nice. And just working with a change in the hands each time. Good. And back to one hand, just now working with a hip and Really now feel the hips are flexible. 
transition, the movement from one into the other. As much as possible, keep the shoulder relaxed. Let the hip just work through the hand. And changing sides. Alternating the hands now. Okay, we're just opening up to the top, changing above the head, and working with the horizontal movement. So just placing the hand on the back of the, the other hand, roll it into it above the head, and then just drop it. And really work with a kind of, of a really clear horizontal movement. So we're just doing really following this line as much as possible. As much as possible, keep it in a kind of horizontal. And especially now you're coming above the head, raising through the through the arms. Let me feel the weight drain down. Down, 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 down. So feel as the hands go up, the body's really, the feeling in the body really sinking, draining down. So, so. That's uh, so good. Uh, so. Nice. Trying to open the feeling out in the in the back of the body. Go, brother! Ouch! And then just play with this combination. So you're going to go over the top, here, yeah, change, and then drop it to the back. Over the top, here, yeah, roll it over onto the side. And you can do this really kind of basic going to the vert, going to the horizontal, changing, find the horizontal, change it, drop it, change it, drop it. Change it, drop it. And once you get into it, just start to take really the feeling into the center. What's happening right to the center of the body. Obviously it's quite a complex move for the hands to do. Really feel the centers connecting. And once you feel kind of connected to it, just start to slightly increase the fluidity of it, it is nice and slow. I feel the whole body is going to be involved in the movement. Let's see. Good. Nice, nice, nice. 
Nice. So good. Yeah, and also try the other side. So let it come over the other way. Drop it down. And again, just start with the basic establish the horizontal. Draw it across nice and slow. Drop it down. And you can think about just passing your, your mind into the tip of the jaw. It's going to come up, over, horizontally, horizontally to that side, and then just let the tip drop. Drop. Try and pass your feeling down the hold your so there's something coming down through the body and there's also feeling passing out the tip of the jaw. I find it's easier to think about them being a sphere. So I think about a kind of sphere of this tip of the movement. This way. This way. And once you get used to it, just start to. Let the body fully join the movement. Very nice. Good. Nice, nice, nice. Good, and then just start to work with the feet. So just moving the feet. Just start with this one, this kind of figure of eight towards the front. Nice and simple movements. And the key thing is just feel the connection between the hip and the hand. And the feet, obviously. So obviously the, the easiest method to think about is the base of the hands and the feet move together. So think about as you move the feet, the hand moves. Feet, hands, feet, hands. And once you can coordinate that in a kind of very simplistic way, Think about coordinating the lower body to the upper body. And just feel that the priority is going to go. This is the great thing about weapons because everything's above and everything's in front. So really think about my priority needs to be to the back of my body and the, and the lower body. So just give the movement as much as you can to the hips and the legs, the lower body. You might find it interesting also just to increase the movement with the legs a little bit. When we do this, we tend to do it kind of uh, normal in a kind of comfortable way. But I think you can also really open out the movement a little bit more. That's it. Play a little bit with drawing the body down there. This way, it's a little bit more dynamic. Try not to slip on the floor as you do it. Yes. Oh. That's it. So, and then once you kind of come forward with that, just start to include a little bit of the back. Just bring it in a kind of rotation. Yeah. So I generally use the, in terms of movement, I use these kind of frontal, frontal to the back. And when I want to turn, I use the back one. Right. You can also turn with the figure eight, but it's a bit kind of tricky actually. Right. I prefer to just rotate a little bit with the back. Just continue. You just start to feel more and more the center connected. And as much as you can, again, just start to open out the lower body. Experiment with different kind of footwork. A little bit like the rotations we were doing yesterday. You can really play with how I rotate the body out. And for me, once I get into this, the Joe almost starts to feel separate from me. And then I can start to think of it a little bit like the Joe's a kind of partner. And then I'm basically rolling the body around to basically avoid the partner. So I'm kind of using movements to, in a way, kind of slip past the Joe. And I'm basically connecting my center, sliding across it. So imagine sliding across a partner, very close, or rolling through to the side. So that start, starts to feel more and more, more connected to the jaw, the body and the jaw moving. And just start to work a little bit with this idea. And I am trying to avoid the jaw. Like, 
And then if you've got the space, you've got the ceiling. Just start to play a little bit with the high rotation. Just be careful. Take your time. And the rotation above the head's very versatile. You can use it for lots of body work. Especially nice for using it for a big, big, big kind of room, tank and movement. So you can use it for really kind of rotating, entering in the body. Play a little bit with it. Make sure you've got the space. You're kind of comfortable. You're not worried really about hitting something. And then just start to include it. So. A little bit with just one hand. And to do this just with kind of controlling, passing it between the hands, but you can also do this Which is possible with one. And again, just start to work it really out. Okay, good. So we're just going to real basic ski work. So just starting left side forward. Just do about 10 or so on side, 8 or 10. And just change the side. Just take it nice and slow within your own time. Try and really connect down through the whole journey. <coughs> nice and slow. Take your time. Did about eight or ten pures from sides. Good. Okay, good. And this, in the same way, if you think about the Bokken work, when you when you create a strike, there's a feeling in the feet up at the same time. So there's a kind of equal movement in the in the happening in the feet. So think also the same here as you find the focus in the hands. There's also a sense that the feet are going to go ground. So in a way, they're, they're doing the opposite of the hands because the hands are doing kind of focusing and the feet are kind of spreading. But feel that, that the weight of the body is just kind of received into the feet. The tendency in this case, just watch it, is to get caught in one foot and then basically try and reground through the movement. But just feel as you go, you're, you're very heavy there. So you've got a quality as a strike, as the impact made, the body's kind of really, really grounded and relaxed. And again, it's, it's not about power, it's about being, it's a, firstly, it's just about being stable. So, uh, or look for something that's a little bit more grounded and stable. Do you feel a little bit like there's a really, there was really a clear connection between the tip of the jaw and the back foot? So feel that there's really a connection out from the from the, from the feet to the tip. There. Just see if you can kind of find the feeling there. Looks in the hand and the settling of the feet through the. 
Okay, so there's, there's really different ways to use the Joe in, in, in different kind of arts, you know, in a, in a way the, the one you, see, you might see a lot, a lot of the time is this kind of movement, where they say that the hips are kind of engaging through the movement. So you'll see this in some styles, especially in some, some, some Aikido schools, you might see this, but in the, in the case of this movement, really think in terms of a kind of bayonet, spear, this kind of work, and that the feeling is really that you're side on through the movement, and that you come into it really a sideways posture. The body so just feel that basically the, the, the body work is going to allow this to happen so it allows this kind of swing through to happen and in this case i'm not doing this kind of screen motion in a way so what you're doing in this case is really using an arc through the body this way and it basically means that the, the whole body is going to be side on japanese that this is really like a hito, I mean. so it's really like the body's very the body basically becomes very narrow so that the feeling is like a very strong wedge but sharp triangle towards the point so it's, I always feel like always this is, this is much more like a spear technique coming through this way. But just allow the whole body to kind of press through. And you're going to keep pretty, pretty side on, or at least kind of narrow with the body. Narrow is probably the better. Better word. Uh, so, yeah. And that position should just allow the Joe freedom to kind of swing. That's uh, so. Yeah, good. Nice. Very nice. nice. And just now take it into a Zengdog ski. So just really emphasizing the rotation, really taking the Joe, Joe at the back, thrusting through. And again, just focusing really on the footwork, much more than the Joe. Just really find the feet through the movement. There. You feel your through into the back. Yeah, and again, the, the basic kind of order for it, if you think about it, is, is trying to unite the hand width to the footwork. So if you feel the hands go, the feet go, hands, feet, hands, feet, hands, feet, hands, feet, hands, feet, hands, feet. And then once you've got that, really, that kind of coordination is very clear. If you feel that super clear, just go to the feeling like the center makes the rotations. So it's, it's the feeling like the impulse now comes directly from the center. And then from here, the rotation comes from the center. So really 
just work on this coordination. Once the hands and the feet are really working together, the priority then can then go to the lower body in the center. And then you've got something a little bit more flexible. Nice, nice, nice. about the jokes we have tons of kata so you don't need to invent any so we're going to just work with the 13 but just the first two movements so we've not done it a long time man. so just start with this kind of joker mic again very neutral just let the body let the body relax and then really feel that you come into movement the body wedges out a little bit to the left side and then just come to the hey you actually on the right side and nice and calmly just come back so really include all the movements in the in your feeling Really full feeling. Here. And then draw it back. Keep everything full all the time. Even as you come back into the command, keep everything full. Good. So the, the main work in this, in terms of kata work, is, is really think about this stillness into motion. So really, really clear stillness and then boom, into motion. Now that's whatever, however good you get at that, you can always go deeper into it. So you can always be more efficient. You can always go, you can always be more still and you can always be more, more direct in the movement. So just really work on this as a kind of idea. Look for this point here. Look for this point here where you're just relaxed, everything's still, and the whole stretch is going to stack. Like you're kind of waiting for a bus. And then you've got to go from that state into something very active. And then from that position, look for something. And just look for these, the kind of the beginning and the end is also very clear. Still. So just look for that kind of moment where everything becomes still, calm. Very neutral and just ready to go. And it's nothing to do with speed, it's, it's to do with this going this idea of stillness into, into motion. I've got some kind of crane outside. What is that? Just look for that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. And this is the beauty of kata training because you're repeating the same movements over and over. You can really go deep into this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. Good. Nice, 
Very nice. Good. And we just take a little bit further. We won't do the full pattern, but just look at the, the four movements. So one, two. Now here's a really nice one drawing back, finding a block. And then here, pressing through. Very, again, just take your time. If you use a kind of basic form, I think real clear, still move. Still move. Still move. Still move. So nice and calm. And we tend to go to power too early, to focus too early. So really just focus on the kind of quality of the movement. Just this idea is everything goes together. Everything goes together. Yeah. Yeah. Come back. Good. Nice, nice. Good. Yeah, and it's really related, and it actually is kind of the same thing, but think about your your the possibility to just move. So especially in, in what, what tends to happen in this case is these moves, these first moves are very frontal. They're very dynamic to the front, to the front. And then this movement really requires me to draw back. So the tendency is going to move, and then we're it's going to lurch into the movement, but really feel that you establish the connection to the ground clear. And then you just press through and roll back. Quick, and step on the floor. And then you just press back. So just focus on that, that kind of moment, a really nice movement. But just this ability to just move. Is and then just back. So again, just looking for that moment. I can just decide to pull the body back. Just watch in this case four. And third. I get kind of lost a bit in the front. So really try and feel the whole back of the body. In. In. Back. Forward. Together. Um, Michael, uh, that third move, yeah. is it protecting against a thrust or a strike? Yeah, this, this is against a thrust, so you're, if you think actually all the, all the moves in the 13, that the, the later the, they're against all against the thrust coming in. So if you think about in this case, there's a thrust coming into the chest, and I'm basically going to wedge out and, and collect, basically, basically kind of just collect underneath the jaw. So if you imagine a thrust coming in this way, yeah. So I'm just wedge the body out and just move on to underneath the gel. I've got that position and then wedge out, just make contact with it. And then I'm raising it up and then thrusting underneath it. Yeah, so it's got the function of a kind of block. That, that way, that way. Okay. So just like that's it. Okay. 
that's a move to it. I'm actually going to comp compress the, the kata down. So I'm going to do now this. You go one, two, three, four. Now from here to all the draw backs, five. Find this high block, six. Come in, and then seven, eight. Just going to do a kind of eight move. If you get lost, just keep copying yourself. It comes from here, goes one, two, three. This is the same four. Roll the jaw back five. Roll the hips in six, seven. And then just roll back into eight. This way. Should have angles as well. Seven, Just focus on the last movement. So just start in a ski command. Again, just just for now, just focus on hands and feet, basically coordinated together. So we're going to ski command, just draw back, hands and feet. Drawing, hands, feet. Hands, feet, hands, feet. So actually should be feet, hands, feet, and so you're going to start with the right side. Roll back. Feet, then the hands. Feet, 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 yeah. It just works on that kind of connection. We're just going to work together. Awesome. Great. Okay, in the last week, just do this full sequence of eight movements. And again, focus first on the hands on the feet if you're kind of working on this kind of connection. And if you kind of feel you've got that, just go to this idea that the center is basically going to open the roots out. It's a little bit like we were saying on, on Sunday, it's like you've got to basically take the movement from away from the head to thinking it, to really just feeling it from the, from the center out. So once the, this is why the cat is also great because you can just learn the movements and then I don't need to think about them anymore. I just think about doing the, doing the movements from the center. So. Just if you've got the connection, you've got the movement. Just think now about the center. So the center creates the movement. The center, center, center back. Yeah. So just go to that that kind of level if you can. Us. Uh, Right. And the last few times, forget the screens totally. Forget you're on Zoom. Just do the movements. Nice. So great. Hey. Oh. Hey. 
Terus, wah. H O H last repetition just do it as slowly as you can or basically as slow as you kind of feel comfortable with just the last one do it really full full of feeling just take it nice and slow Great, good. Okay, we'll stop that. Good. It's just a really condensed version. I can't do that so far, so I'm kind of cutting it out. So, hey, come on, I got it. Come on, come on, I got it. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Again and again. And then again. <laughs> and again. Thank you, Michael. So I've said it for four days now, huh? Yeah. <laughs>